Well, back again for another No Dumb Questions in Ham Radio. Today we have a doozy. Just the absolute floodgates of questions came out from one individual uh, covering everything from what is the most effective way to listen to multiple types of services, should I bother even getting my license, and what's with YouTubers not showing how radios actually work? Do we not do that? Let's get started. So I got an email from Jeff here, and, and we're going to have to take this in a couple of chunks to get all the way through it, but here we go. I'm such a newbie, I don't, even, I don't even have a radio yet. I've had a keen interest in radios for years, but often the complexity wasn't worth my time. I can understand that. YouTube videos tend to be of people unboxing and reviewing some radios, but, and then underline and bold, I never see videos of what people actually do with them. So I think this is patently false. I'm going to continue answering your email, don't worry. And I take no um, ill will towards your question. I just don't think it's true. It, look up Parks on the Air, Summits on the Air, look at people working Morse code, CW, look at people working VHF, UHF. I'm not seeing it. I, I, I really don't see it. Yeah, sure there, are, um, sure there are unboxing videos and showing people like what a radio does in the home shack environment, but guess what? Most of the radio we do, we're generally operating from home. Most people are homebound when they're using their radios, so... Anyway, here's a stupid question. I saw one comment on someone's YouTube video that they were listening to the ISS, the International Space Station, with a $25 Baofeng. Is that even possible? Or was that just some clown trying to be funny? It's a serious question because I'd love to listen on the ISS, but I, but if I find out it's not possible with the Baofeng, then I'll be disappointed. Uh, it's 100% possible. <laughs> In fact, I've done a multi-part series with Sean Kutzko, who I'd call very experienced in the area of satellite amateur radio, including operating with the ISS. The ISS has multiple amateur radios on board that allow us to do things like APRS beaconing for our position heading and sending messages, as well as talking to the actual ISS crew, as well as running off of their crossband repeater that they have on board. So literally, using the ISS to bounce our signals. Can you listen to them? Sure, if you want to, but you can do more than that and actually transmit to the ISS. And there are also FM satellites that are orbiting the Earth that function in a very similar way. There are other satellites too, if you'd like to know more about that, link is in the description to the great video series that I did with Sean Kutzko. Thanks, Sean. All right, so continues. Other guys say you can listen in on airport radio traffic and it is rebroadcast at different frequencies for the ground crews. And we could pick that up. Awesome. I'm right between LaGuardia and JFK airports. How cool is that? I'd love to. I've had no idea how that is even possible and no idea how to find that, that kind of information. Uh, this sounds like a job for Google. You're asking me a really a Google question. I will point you in the direction of radioreference.com if you're talking about scanning for the radios that are on the ground. If you're talking about aeronautical frequencies, they have their own special band that they operate on. And yes, you can listen to that too. There are many radios that support air band monitoring. And again, they have a special frequency set. Generally, it's all done in amplitude modulation, AM radio, something that you likely have, you know, your home broadcast AM radio station. Same modulation, but very different frequency space. I'll post a link in the description for that too, so you can take a look. And, and I should note, Airband is not amateur radio. It's just one of the many services that are, that are on the same bands that we all are too. I'm a shortwave radio listener. I listen to all kinds of frequencies well outside the amateur space. And Airband is sometimes a lot of fun to pull up, particularly when I'm walking outside with the kids. Okay, we continue. I'm not interested in transmitting. If I were, I'd take the course and get licensed. I'm in my 50s with too much invested in my life to risk trouble with the FCC. See, I don't get this. I, I, I still don't understand people who are really scared of the FCC. You've got much bigger issues with other uh, areas of the government than worry about you know what the FCC is going to do. The general rule of thumb is if you're not a jerk and you're not interfering with first responders, the military, government officials of any kind, then you're largely not going to have any problem. Interfering in general is kind of a jerk thing to do anyway, and I highly am against it. Most people have no problems with this, and I'm assuming that you're probably like that too. So I'd say if you ever 
ever change your mind, definitely consider getting your license, your amateur radio license, and you'll have a lot of fun with that said. It's that I'd love to listen in on all the stuff, but I've no idea where to find the fun stuff, especially since that's pretty subjective. And cycling through thousands of radio channels, frequencies are even bigger than thousands. There's no such thing as channels on a lot of these services, it's just frequencies. On the off chance I catch somebody, someone who, who happens to be transmitting at the time, seems to me like fairly slim chances. Are there frequencies listed and posted anywhere on the internet with who's broadcasting on them? I mean, yeah, of course. You, you've got the, the shortwave broadcast stations that publicize where they are. There's shortwave listings of active frequencies. Obviously, you have the ham bands for HF, the low side of the frequencies. Those can be worldwide frequencies that you can hear people around the world. You would just need to look up the amateur radio band plan for that. As you start going to the north side of the HF frequencies, you get to citizens band CB radios. You run into the air band that we talked talked about earlier. Obviously, you'll run into broadcast FM stations for music and whatnot. And then you get into the ham bands again as you get to 2 meters and 1.25 meters and 70 centimeters, etc. But there are all kinds of stuff in between those bands. There are different services that exist in those spaces. For you, I really have to recommend picking up a software-defined radio dongle. For you specifically, I would recommend getting an RSP-1A that is sold or made by SDR Play. It's a small, tiny box that connects to your computer. You use computer software to display a waterfall, and that waterfall shows you where all the cool stuff is. You'll see actual data or information flowing down the waterfall, and you simply click on it, and you'll start to hear it. And these SDR software applications are, are good enough that you can change the types of radio, FM, AM, digital in some cases, and be able to listen to exactly what that transmission is. You are the perfect person to start out with an SDR dongle. I, f I feel like this would be really good for you. If you don't want to necessarily go down the route of having to set up an antenna, outside, and yeah, you should set up an antenna outside for an SDR, uh, run the cables to your little dongle that plugs into your computer. If that sounds like too much or you're not sure you want to do all that, try out online SDRs, web SDR. Web SDR, Kiwi SDR are two different types of services, free services, where you can actually log into someone's remote SDR and listen to what's out there. Now, most of what you're going to hear is going to be on the lower frequencies, the HF side of the house, but there is a ton of cool stuff going on there, and you can hear everything that's going on just by clicking around, again, clicking on that waterfall. Highly, highly, highly recommend you avail yourself of this right now. But if you'd like to buy an SDR, I'll post some links in the description so you can check them out as well. I like the idea of Baofeng for entry level listening in for the value. I just don't want it to be some piece of electronic that gathers dust in the corner because it's too hard to figure out or doesn't pick up anything interesting. That's really my hesitation for getting into the hobby. Well, okay, so here's, here's where I'll, I'll give you the sad, it's not the sad truth, but it is a truth. Radio can be complicated for some folks, particularly if you don't come to it naturally or, or you don't have a background in it. You do sometimes have to program a Baofeng radio, and sometimes there just isn't that much stuff that a Baofeng can actually hear. Again, if you're sitting inside your house just with the little stock antenna on it, you might not pick up a lot because the walls around you prevent RF from getting easily to your radio. I still am kind of um, thinking, since you don't really want to transmit, there's no reason why you should limit yourself to the amateur radio bands, and you should open up that aperture to include things that are outside the amateur radio service. GMRS, FRS, CB, as you've already mentioned, and airband, and then start going down into HF and listen to the really cool stuff that exists out there. Is it complicated? Well, if you looked at it in the whole, like the whole elephant that I'm talking about right now, then yeah, it, it sounds daunting. It sounds like, oh my god, this is going to take so long to do. It doesn't have to be, though. And really what you should do is set some goals that you want to achieve. 
In my case, I'll give you three. Check out the web SDRs, Kiwi SDRs of the world, try them out and get your feet wet there. If you find that interesting and compelling to continue moving forward, consider getting yourself a SDR radio, like an RSPA-1 from SDR Play. Set that up with a simple antenna outside and you will hear local radio, local close in, high frequency, air band, among many other things, and HF radio as well. Many things exist outside in the air band. They're all there in the air. You just have to be able to receive them. And then item three, consider maybe getting a scanner of some kind, something that scans for first responders and other frequencies that, as again, may be outside the amateur radio service space. There is a wealth of information online. I will again post a bunch of links. The HF Underground, radioreference.com, all of those are extremely powerful for talking about what frequencies are active and where. You just kind of have to get into kind of understanding what all of this is. I made a video uh, a week or so ago on getting started in amateur radio. And while it, it's not going to cover all of your bases, it's going to, I think, maybe set a baseline for how radios work. So I would ask that you go check that out. Hopefully you find it and helpful, enjoyable, and it gives you a little bit of motivation to maybe get started. You are actually starting in a similar way that I started with radio. I didn't start out having really any knowledge of amateur radio. I had a shortwave receiver. A lot of folks have come to amateur radio via CB radio. That wasn't my case. I came to it from shortwave listening. Shortwave listening introduced me to how radio waves work and function, the, how the bands, what the bands are, why we switch bands at daytime, nighttime. I played around with radios like that for a really long time, listening to services and spaces well outside the broadcast or amateur radio spaces. And that gave me a lot of interest that later led to my future in amateur radio. So I hope that helps and give you a little bit of background there as well. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to have me answer your question, you can send it to josh at hamtactical.com. Keep it ham radio related. And remember, we're here to help out people getting started in ham radio or that are at a point where they're stuck and they want some help. If you want some replies immediately to your questions, though, these videos take me a little while to produce. Send them to our Discord. Join our Discord. Our HRCC Discord is a wonderful community. There are people on every hour of the day and literally some of the best people for answering questions in amateur radio. They take their time and really try and get you going in the right direction. So if that sounds interesting to you, the link is in the description to join the Discord as well as our Facebook group, which functions in a very similar manner. All right, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.